Hi, thank you so much um, for inviting me to talk today. This is uh, my talk, Musically Speaking, and it's about music, autism, and technology. Whenever I do a talk, I love starting with a quote by uh, the late, great Oliver Sacks, which is, music is part of being human. It's why I do what I do um, and why I feel so passionate about music. So I grew up in London for the first 10 years of my life. Um, and was immersed in a very supportive, loving family with my mum and dad and my little brother, Rob, um, who, when he was two years old, was diagnosed with autism. And uh, when you get a diagnosis of autism in the family, it's like the whole world comes crashing down. You only hear about the negative things that are associated with autism. Um, but my brother now has done amazing and is now a public speaker himself, so he's given me lots of tips for today which is amazing. Um, and yeah, it was a really supportive family and I'm now very, very close to my brother. So autism has been a massive part of my life and I think always will be. Rob has been able to explain and kind of show me what autism is and how it works for him um, and also how it may work for other people. But the other massive thing in my life is obviously music. I was taught guitar by my dad from the age of seven Music was always on in the house, um, and I was always kind of encouraged to do what I want to do in my life, which is amazing. Um, so I am now, uh, it's weird to say, a professional musician, and I kind of do lots of different things. I studied music from GCSE to A-level all the way to university, and now, like we said earlier, I teach, um, I produce for other people, I perform, uh, I run a festival, I support lots of different people in music. But yeah, my core kind of ethos is that I think music should be made accessible to everyone. And this is kind of one thing that I really believe in, is that everybody has the capability to be creative. Everybody, regardless of background, regardless of where you're from, ability, your situation, everybody has that, you know, the, the capability to be creative. And everybody should have access to music making. Even, you know, if you don't have the money or the resources to find a guitar or a piano, you should be able to find alternative means to be creative. Um, so that's kind of the two main things that I kind of try and strive to, to do. So I, in university, thinking about um, music and autism being two massive things in my life, I decided for my final study to write a dissertation on music autism and technology, and I uh, wrote my dissertation which was called Designing Technology Assisted Music Workshops for People with Autism. Now a massive other thing that I loved studying in uni was um, community music, so making music as a group and the kind of positive impacts that that can have. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's have a look at that, and I did some research and it was amazing to see how closely linked music, autism and technology are. Um, so hopefully in the next 10 minutes I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what I found out. So as part of my dissertation and my research, I basically, Rob, my little brother, likes to say he was my guinea pig for my dissertation. But basically what I did is I just gave him lots of different technologies um, and said, do you want to just have a jam and see how it works? And then I extended that out into groups of people on the autistic spectrum and yeah, we found some really incredible things about how it works, but not only how it works for groups of people on the autistic spectrum, but how that then extends out to people that aren't on the autistic spectrum. Um, so yeah, I'll get into it. So now that I've, I've got lots of Oliver Sacks quotes, he's amazing. Um, so this is a one that I kind of inspired me to do it in the first place, and he said, music seems to act as a magnet for those on the autism spectrum. It can establish contact with even the most inaccessible. Now, my brother is verbal, but I have worked with people on the spectrum that are completely nonverbal, and it is amazing how music just works um, to evoke positive change. Um, so, it was said earlier, I run music workshops. I run them with lots of different groups. Um, I work in schools, I work in prisons, I work in hospitals. Um, you name it, I've probably worked there just to try and get people making music. And the reason I do it is because, um, like I said, I want to make music accessible to all. Um, it encourages social interaction and communication. It increases confidence and self-esteem. And also you can problem solve as a group, but the most important thing is having fun. That's the key, you know, that's the whole point of making music and trying to get, you know, get a positive outcome. 
Now, the other thing, the other reason I looked at music, autism, and technology was my brother, because I was a, a guitarist, Rob never kind of took to an instrument, and he always said to me that it was almost like the fear of getting something wrong. Um, and I think a lot of people, when I say, oh, right, we're going to write a song, or I'm going to teach you how to play guitar, people are like, oh, my God, that's impossible. I can't do that. That's, that's mad. Um, but the one thing that I found by using technology is that it breaks down that barrier. You can easily make something sound really great quickly. Um, and Oliver Sacks agreed. He said, one does, not have, one does not need to have any formal knowledge of music, nor indeed to be particularly musical, to enjoy music and to respond to it at the deepest levels. Um, when I was growing up, I only listened to music with guitars in it, um, and I had hair down to here. Um, and yeah, I look ridiculous. Um, but then when I met my girlfriend, she opened my musical horizons, and I started listening to dance music and hip hop, and started really getting into how that was made. Um, so I loved looking at things like samplers, synthesizers, um, chaos pads, iPads, and everything to make music. And then I thought, okay, yeah, these professional musicians can use it, but how can we use this in a group of completely non-musicians and make music? And it's amazing how that works, especially with groups of people on the autistic spectrum. Um, it offers kind of a novelty, um, lots of People that I've met that are on the autistic spectrum love technology and love getting hands-on. Um, so you've got that interest. The multi-sensory and visual element of it is great. And it can be easy to access and very easy to use. So like I said, my brother had that fear of getting it wrong, and a lot of people do have that. Um, so you can easily create something that sounds good very quickly. Um, you can create beats, you can create loops, um, and complex patterns literally just by pressing your finger down on a screen or triggering a button or moving, triggering a sensor um, and more. And this is key to sustaining creativity and playing together. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly jump on my iPad. I could literally do this for ages, um, but I'm going to do it for like 30 seconds. I'm going to show you this very quick app, which is called a Chaosolator. Has anyone heard of a Chaosolator synthesizer? OK, cool. Uh, so basically, it's a touch pad. And as I put my finger on it, it'll trigger a drum loop. And it's as easy as that. And the amount of people that I say, right, we're going to make a drum loop now, and people are like, oh my god, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. I go, right, just come and put your finger there. And they're like, whoa, I can, I can do it, I can do it, it's amazing. Um, there's loads of different apps and, and things that can make it work. And one of the key things with working with people on the autistic spectrum is that they like things that loop and repeat. That's what I've found in workshops. Um, anyone that knows anyone that's autistic will know that um, repetitive behavior is quite a common trait. Um, my brother liked to spin when he was younger, so he would just spin for ages and ages. Um, but it's, it's weird how there's almost like this unwritten rule that a familiar looping beat really promotes engagement and sustains engagement. Um, there's nothing unexpected. Um, it's familiar. So, you know, that they're all very common things between, you know, evoking that, that positive outcome. Um, and also, the, the great thing about using technology and looping things and using things that can stay in the same tempo is that it makes playing together really, really easy. Um, so if you had a iPad, a synthesizer, a sampler, and something else, but they were all synced together, it means that if you have no experience in playing music, but you're just putting your finger down there or pushing buttons, it'll all sound good. It's not like giving four non-musicians a guitar and go, go. It's like, oh, OK, cool. We can just like press buttons, and it will sound good. Um, and yeah, that, that's amazing for communication. Um, and it sounds really cliche, but like having conversations through music is really, really cool. Um, and again, there's another quote here which says, music occupies more areas of our brain than language does. Humans are a musical species. So when I'm jamming together and when I'm in these groups with people, we will literally have conversations through music. It's not like I go, right, when I do this, it means this. It's literally just by looking at each other and interacting with each other through sound. Um, and that's, you know, technology is incredible for that. Um, it, you know, it improves listening, it improves social skills, and literally everyone can play and get involved, which is ace. Um, the other thing, I know I'm rapidly going through this, um, but the other thing that technology is amazing for is that it can be adapted and changed really, really, really easily. Um, it's not like a guitar or a piano or a saxophone, which is, that's it, go. Um, it's so manipulative and, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing how many times I've been in a workshop where somebody's like, I can't do that, or 
that won't work for me, or I, can't, I physically can't put my finger on the touch screen. So I'm like, right, okay, how can we do it? So you can use things like sensors, you can use things like game controllers that you hack. Um, if anyone's heard of the Swansea Laptop Orchestra, they do that. They hack game controllers to make sounds. Um, and that's amazing because you can then suit it to individual needs. So I ran a workshop two years ago where one of my participants who was on the autistic spectrum loved uh, Nintendo Wii and we managed to hack a Wii controller so when he was moving it, it would make a sound. So it was something that was familiar to him that was then engaging him through music. It wasn't something completely different and uh, that's crazy. It was, oh, what's this Wii remote doing here? Oh, wow, I'm doing something awesome with that. That's cool. Um, and the other thing which it's great for is it can make something very complex very easy, but on the flip side, it can make something that seems very easy very complex. So if somebody's like, oh, I'm bored of just putting my finger here and triggering a loop, I'm like, right, cool. Now I'm going to have to break that down, and you're going to have to trigger lots of different things with multiple fingers. So it's amazing for that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just really cool. I love technology. Um, so making music accessible, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, I fancy that. Um, there are so many ways that you can make music. Um, quickly, cheaply, easily. I imagine most people in here have a smartphone or an iPad or a computer at home. Um, there are so many different things that you can download for free that will just make music. And it doesn't, you, know, you don't have to sit there and go, right, I'm going to be a music producer. I'm going to make this, and it's going to blow everyone's mind. It can literally be you're just sitting in bed and like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make a loop and just be creative for an hour, because you will find that it evokes so many positive things in your life. Um, but on the, on the flip side, with music and music technology and kind of adapting it to suit individual needs, there are amazing companies and people around the world doing fantastic things. So you've got sp um, specially designed instruments. Um, there's a thing called a Skoog, which is amazing and has been designed specifically for people that have individual needs. Um, and organizations like Drake Music and Community Music Wales are constantly breaking down barriers and doing really amazing things with music tech. So I wanted to put this little quote in by my brother um, just to kind of show that, OK, I've been talking about music and autism, but everybody's kind of in the same boat with everything. Um, and when my brother does his talks, he, uh, he says, sure, I face some challenges because of my autism, but I bet everyone else often faces the same challenges, like being stressed about something that changes unexpectedly or noises and feelings that annoy you. I'm sure that everybody in here has experienced that at one point in their life. And that's why it's amazing that I found out these things or collaborated with people and found these links between autism and music, but it's, it's wider than that, it's bigger than that. Um, if you make music or want to get involved with music, it's been proven that it reduces stress, it reduces anxiety, it pushes boundaries, you'll do stuff that you won't believe that you can do. Um, it removes barriers, and like I said, the most important thing, you'll have fun with it. Um, that's the most important thing with everything, is, is having fun. Um, so yeah, technology is everywhere, so get involved. Um, I use it as much as I can all over the place. I obviously use it when I produce, um, I use it to teach, um, I use it when I'm running my music festival. Um, yeah, it's just amazing, and it promotes engagement and positive outcomes. Um, so yeah, I just want to finish with, everybody has the capability to be creative, and everybody should have access to making music. Um, so yeah, get out there and make some tunes. Cheers.